Steve Gamash here with another Chef Knives to Go Quick Look product review. And we've got kind of a special entry here today for this episode. This is the Nigara Anmon uh, Shirogami No. 2 Guto 240 millimeter knife. The core steel, as mentioned, is uh, Shirogami or white paper No. 2 Hitachi reactive carbon steel. And the heat treat's about 62 Rockwell approximately on that core steel. Uh, I talked to Mark Richmond, he said they pretty much do it by eye, so that's an approximate on the heat treat. The um, construction, it's what's known as their Anmon project, and if you want more information on this, it's a pretty cool, they got kind of a nice site, but uh, just do a Google search on Nigata Anmon, and you'll find their site, the company site, and you can look at it. But uh, what uh, this planning, I believe, or the, the whole construction, I think, is a 25-layer handmade uh, Damascus pattern welded steel and the core is white number two as we mentioned. They've got this special pattern uh, and the story is that the the markings on it are kind of reminiscent of these uh, Unmown Falls. Uh, and Again, go to the website and check it out but uh, I'm going to spend a little more time on this knife discussing some aspects and I have been using it so this is not a straight out of the box. Look here it's got some patina on it, a lot of blues from protein. But uh, this blade is a kind of a high echelon type blade. You can get that feel as soon as you pick it up and look at it. Um, it's got just that feel about it. Uh, the weight is not exceptionally light. It's got some heft to it, and the blade's kind of stiff as well. Uh, it's got a real nice feel in my opinion. It's 7.7 .7 ounces or 219 grams. The edge length on this one is 244 on the edge, or about 9.6 inches. And the overall length is about 397, almost 400 millimeters. The spine thickness is about 2.8 millimeters um, above the back of the blade and it doesn't have a lot of distal taper so it's pretty close to that maybe two and a half or so not a lot of distal taper I'll give you a close-up but then it thins out right at the very very tip uh, again the blade is pretty stiff and stout and it has that kind of hard feel to it uh, the blade height is about 50.6 millimeters each uh, particular example of this knife will be slightly different because they are handmade. The handle is really nice. It's just got a great kind of classic feel and it's a little bit heavy to balance the blade out. It's octagonal uh, walnut with an ebony handle. I do have a little bit of a rise in the wood there off the handle. You could sand that down but I really didn't notice it in practice. Um, Circumference is a little bit oversized from the standard uh, three inch, so it's about 79 millimeters, and you've got kind of a fairly wide neck here. So this has a you know a beefy disposition to it. It just feels like a serious knife, which it is. <laughs> so let's take a closer look. This thing is just gorgeous, and the fit and finish is absolutely outstanding. Uh, they they spent a lot of time working on these. So here's your embossed logo kanji. Really well done. Um, you can see the pattern. I'm just going to kind of show it as best I can. This is probably a good angle here. The patina I've been building, this thing loves uh, cooked poultry. It just cranks up the blue big time with cooked chicken or poultry. Um, so if you want to keep rolling the patina on this thing, uh, keep, keep hitting it with that. Um, I did, as a little back end here, I did find that it had a thin layer of, I guess, lacquer on it. And uh, it was kind of hard to detect except for some areas on the spine and towards the tip. So I did take that lacquer off. And it was a little bit tenacious, but I took it all off and then um, used the knife. And it, it was very reactive. I ended up actually getting a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend and doing a light scrubbing to take most of that patina off because it was starting to do some oranges and things I really didn't like. Um, and once I did that, it slightly muted the texture on the cladding, but it's etched, so it's a heavy etch to get that cladding to pop. You can see a lot of the results of that etching here. Um, so it smoothed that out just a little bit, maybe muted the pattern ever so slightly, but it made it much less reactive. And it's taken on a nice rainbow hue of kind of purples and blues from the, the poultry I've been processing with it. Um, Again, fit and finish is fabulous on this thing. The spine's nicely done. The choil's nicely done into the emoto or neck. Uh, you've got just a touch of maki showing there. Um, balance point on this is like right there, which is pretty close to a pinch grip. The knife is stiff. It's got 
Um, just, uh, you know, a solid, you know, crafted quality feel to it. It's just beautiful. Um, performance is not super like laser performance. So it, it kind of likes to be worked hard. Um, I thought it was a beautiful slicer, man. This thing just, it was awesome slicing proteins. Um, the tip's not going to laser through stuff, but, um, I think part of that might be the finish. I, it's just my particular, I think, opinion from, from kind of handling a lot of knives, but sometimes with the etching, I think that tends to be a little grabby on wet products. So sometimes I think that can cause a little friction in the cut. Um, as this knife gets used, that should smooth out a little bit and probably increase performance, but it's just an absolutely gorgeous blade. Out of the box edge, it's covered in, um, you know, that lacquer, whatever they had on there. And once I cleared that off, actually all I did was strop it and it came out really nice. I put a little bit more aggressive angle on this and lowered the angles and widened the bevel a little bit. But out of the box, it actually was pretty sharp once you got that um, coating off of there. Uh, let's look at it on a cutting board. It's got a really nice profile. As you might expect at this price echelon, this thing's just really well crafted. The, the grinds are super nice. Um, it's got kind of a gentle grind. It's not a hard shoulder, but kind of a gentle curve uh, down towards the edge. You can feel where the grind is kind of the main blade road is kicking in, but it's, it's kind of like a convex. So it kind of reminds me of some of uh, Tanaka's knives. It's, it's really well done. Here's the profile. It's pretty much a continuous curve. You got just a touch of flat, but not much. It's really fairly curvy. You can see the tip's got some belly to it, so I can get about right there. It'll dig in higher than that, but you could easily rock this over most stuff, I think. If you're doing low rocking, it's just beautiful. It's real smooth flowing profile. But again, not a huge flat spot. So it's just, this is a gorgeous knife. It, I've already stated it a few times, but it is. <laughs> so um, here you have a really exceptional blade. So this, again, it's not a laser, but uh, if you like that kind of style and you're willing to work it a little harder to get through what you need to, and I think the cladding will calm down a little bit over time and also smooth out to increase the performance. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. So his, this is the Nigata Anmon uh, Shirogami number no. 2 Guto 240mm knife.